Back when I first started fishing, winter was a time where I just thought carp didn't feed. It was wet, cold, miserable. I just didn't think it was really worth getting out there and even trying. Winter was a time where I'd sit at home, tie rigs, and prepare for the following spring. In more recent years, I've realized carp do feed all throughout the year. It is possible. Yes, it's harder, but there are ways to make it happen for you. You just need slight adjustments to your approach. At the moment, I've got two nights ahead of me fishing on a beautiful little intimate farm pond close to home. It's a water which we've fished on and off this year, somewhere which we've got reasonable confidence of catching, but fingers crossed we can make something happen in the next couple of nights. So it's pretty much pitch black outside now and it's only about 4.30. The nights certainly are drawing in, but I just about had time to get the rods back on the spots. I mean, the areas that I have fished in the past, I just had to confirm exactly where they were with the lead. Haven't really seen many signs, but we'll see what happens tonight. Just got some sausages on the go, had a chance to sit down and get some food ready. And I was just thinking really, like as well as warm food, it is very important that you stay comfortable on the bank when you're fishing in these colder months. I've got so many layers on, I'm not gonna get cold. I knew it was gonna rain loads, I knew the weather was gonna be rough, so I brought my Titan rather than the groundhog, the little brolly that I normally fish under in the warmer months. Because like I say, staying comfortable, staying dry, warm, is essential if you're gonna enjoy your fishing in the colder months. And also, if you're comfortable, you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna be able to stick at it longer to potentially catch something. Mate, we're in already. I was not expecting this. It's probably the middle of the night and my rod has pretty much one toned. The alarm was just screaming, the reel was just fizzing and uh, I'm hooked into something that's fighting proper weird. It's gone all the way that way, all the way around to the left. Currently the rod's bent double and it's just zipping around the place. Well, it may have wiped out pretty much both of my other rods. And I'm in a bit of a mess right now. There's lines going everywhere. All the rods have come off of the alarms. It's all just a bit chaotic, really. But we got one in the net. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's only our first night. Whew. Excellent. Yes. Well, there you go. Whilst I was playing the fish, I actually thought it was about midnight or sometime in the early hours of the morning. Went back and checked my phone once the fish was in the net. I've only been asleep about half an hour, it's only about 9.30. Got an early night and I really didn't expect to be woken up this quickly. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you very much, Carp. Excellent. Yes! After that fish I caught last night, it actually got quite a lot colder. The clouds drifted off and the pressure got a lot higher and it got really, really quite cold. I was super grateful that I actually remembered to put my second layer on my sleep system and this waterproof shroud. Just extra layers kept me nice and warm last night. Also, these little beauties, super thick woolly socks. So grateful I was wearing them because my feet didn't get cold at all last night. There's actually a little bit of a frost on the ground this morning up the other end of the lake where it's a bit more open. There's no frost up here and I think that's because there's a lot of trees sort of over overhanging and that just keeps the heat in a little bit better. Just a couple of degrees, but it stopped the frost. So in terms of location for why I'm fishing this end of the lake at the moment, even though it's actually shallower than the deeper end of the lake, is that A, shallow water warms up quicker 
and yesterday was relatively mild in comparison to the last few weeks and B there's just so much cover you've got a load of pads a load of reeds an island overhanging trees all of which keeps heat trapped in uh, and it also just gives cover for the fish and places for the fish to hide so I've spoken about where the part of the lake I'm fishing location is obviously very important you've got to be where the fish are to catch them but as well as that you've got to be on the right water in in the colder months I mean there's no point fishing a super deep super massive lake in the middle of winter and struggling and getting upset that you're not catching sometimes it is best to sort of target a smaller shallower and maybe more prolific venue in the winter just to keep you catching keep you enjoying it I mean at the moment I've sort of been catching maybe one or two fish a session over, over the last couple of months I'm chuffed to bits to get one already and I've got another night so another fish would just be a bonus You've probably heard people say literally a thousand times that the most important thing with carp fishing is location and in the winter it's actually even more important mostly because instead of there being fish in little shoals spread out all around the lake like there is in summer come winter those fish are often tightly shoaled up and you'll just find like 20 of them all sat in one little hole somewhere where it's a little bit warmer or they've got a little bit of cover and they won't be moving around very much so because of this, if you find the shoal, you've got a really good chance of catching. If you don't find them, your chances are very, very slim. So in the winter, I'm looking for the subtlest little signs. In the summer, you'd just be like, oh look, there's one, bosh, there's one, bosh, and there's like bubbles and silt coming up everywhere. It's a completely different ball game when it's, when it's cold like this. You're looking for a couple of bubbles coming up, a reed stem just knocking slightly, a slight like flattening on the surface when the fish turns and flattens off the water, the ripple on the water. But yeah, if you do find them, wow, well, you're a lot, lot closer to catching them. So I've had a proper walk around the lake. I've pretty much looked in every little spot. Every spot that I've seen fish in the past, I've gone and checked out. And to be honest, the only area where the fish seem to be is in the pads and in those reeds. So I'm in the right area, I'm confident, and I'm gonna stick with those areas. I will probably move a rod though over towards the reeds because they do look really good at the moment. But whilst the rods are all in, I'm gonna show you what has changed in my approach. Uh, as in what I'm using now compared to what I was using in the warmer months. One of the first changes I make is I actually shorten the length of the hook link. As you can see this session I'm using maybe four, just over four inch long hook links and this is because whilst we were fishing our local park lake we noticed that as the weather got colder the carp moved around slower and when they were feeding they'd very much take one small mouthful and very slowly move on to the next. Whereas in the summer, you know, they'd just be munch, move, munch, move, always looking for more bait. So a shorter hook link tightens up quicker and it gives you more chance of hooking that fish. Obviously with a shorter hook link, you have to be careful with the spot you're fishing. And that's why I do check and check again to make sure that the area I'm fishing is clean and that I can present a nice short. I thought it was a carp for a second. Only a moorhen ruining my swim. So uh, yeah, I'll fish a shorter hook link over the top of a nice clean lake bed. The other adjustment that you'll see in this rig compared to my summer rigs is a slightly smaller hook and a 10 mil hook bait rather than a 15. I just like to use slightly smaller, more subtle approaches when those carp are feeding with more caution and feeding a lot slower. As well as that, I'll actually lessen the amount of loose feed that I'm putting in. In the summer, I'm happy to heave in loads of 15 mil boilies, flake, pellet, all sorts, just to get those fish all grabbing around on your spot. Which when it gets colder like this, you do have to be a bit more subtle. I'll use a few 10 mil boilies in the swim, rather than just filling it in with 15s that will fill the fish up quicker. Just a scattering of 10 mils is a sort of more gentle, subtle approach. Last night, I didn't actually feed anything. In fact, I just went in with my hook baits and a small bag of pellet. That is less than one handful's worth of bait. And because I hadn't really seen any signs yesterday, I wasn't keen on filling it in with bait just in case I overfed the areas. And that little approach managed to get me a bite. However, when it starts getting even colder, and I'm talking about nights getting below zero, you know, really, really cold nights, 
that's when I start to fish with maggots. Little PVA bags of maggots with a really fine mesh so they don't escape and short little rigs with popped up balls of maggots. I like to fish maybe a, a 10 mil pop up or a bit of foam with the maggots tied on on top. The way I do that is simply thread a few maggots onto a sewing needle from my mum's sewing kit. <laughs> uh, put on, thread them onto a bit of thread, tie them off in a knot and tie that knot to the loop in your hair. That just gives you a nice hook bait that sits just off bottom so the maggots can't get stuck in any weed or anything. And I think one of the reasons why maggots are such a good bait when it gets that much colder is because the water goes a bit clearer, the fish aren't really keen on feeding, but when there's just those maggots wriggling around, moving in front of them, they're just spurred into having to take a mouthful. They don't really want to feed, but the movement just spurs them on and makes them get interested. Those little PVA bags of maggots, to make sure that the maggots don't sweat or anything or uh, get moist and start melting the PVA, I'll actually take a bit of cultured stick mix and dust the maggots with that. Just I used to do it with ground bait, but this stuff fizzes up in the water, it clouds the water right up, and I think that really gives you a little edge. Now, the next stage is when it's super cold, and I'm talking like the lakes are pretty much getting ready to freeze over. It's icy cold. The fish are just sat there just off bottom. They don't really want to feed. They're just swimming about. They're yeah, basically it's gonna be very, very hard. You don't wanna give them bait. Throwing bait at them isn't gonna do you any favors. So this is where I go for a single hook bait approach. When I used to fish single hook baits a few years back, I always used to fish just like a 15 mil pop up on a stiff hinge or something. See a sign of a fish and just wang it out there and hope for the best. However, now I'm a lot more confident with something like this, one of these cultured hook baits. This is a 15 mil one and what's in there is a actual normal boilie inside, but the outside is all covered in this coated skin. Now this skin over a couple of hours, a few hours, depending on water temperatures, will dissolve into the water. Bits will be breaking off, clouding up the water, pumping out smells, taste, and color into the water. And I think if you're gonna fish a single, this has got to be one of the best ways to do it. If you're not sure about the lake bed, it's nice to just thread on a PVA bag. And actually when you see this underwater, it proper all goes up and down through the water column, definitely draws them down and gives you a super good chance of a bite. So those are sort of my three approaches uh, as it gets consistently colder through the winter. There is one more stage, however, where things change up even more. When the lakes are actually frozen and there's a lid on them and you just can't get a rig in, the next option is heading down to a river. Rivers very rarely freeze over and they always give you the chance of some great sport from perch, roach, dace, chub, even barbel. I mean, barbel you can fish with practically your carp gear, just scale it down a little bit and they provide great sport, particularly on some of the more productive rivers. I mean, that gives you a, a great option when the lakes are actually frozen over. Anyway, that's enough talking about tactics for now. I'm not gonna catch anything without getting the rods back out. So it's time to tie up a couple more PVA bags, get some fresh pop-ups on and, uh, get the rods back out. The sun's just going down, it's really mild and the lake is looking absolutely beautiful. This low golden light is just absolutely stunning. And the lake's beautiful itself, I mean that's really why we decided to join. It was back in about April, May time we started fishing here. First few sessions got off to an amazing start, in fact Alex, my brother, he just, I don't know, he went and caught one of the biggest fish in the lake straight away. How about this for my first fish from the lake? I don't think I could have asked for anything better. Following up from that 30 pounder, Alex continued to catch, not so many big ends, but some really, really beautiful ones. I mean, the highlight for us both has got to be the sort of double row, scattered, linear thing. It was just 
I've never seen a carp like it. I literally haven't. It was just beautiful. And as with every carp we catch from here, absolutely spotless. Oh, I can't believe it. We'll be back here very soon. <laughs> Over the next few weeks we had a few more fish but we ended up getting quite sort of tied up and busy fishing our local reservoir. We fished there throughout most of the sort of warmer months of spring and summer and it's only really recently that we've actually turned our attention back to this farm pond and have started putting in a little bit more time. In the last few weeks we've done a few sessions, just here and there, mostly overnight as after work. It's quite, because it's quite small, quite shallow, and you can find the spots fairly easily, it's quite a good place to do overnight as that, because I sort of start to learn the areas, you can get rigs back on them, even if it is dark. But we've come down a few evenings, got the rods out, and I wouldn't say it's kicked off like it did in the spring, but we've had some really, really nice ones. Nice. nice. Oh. oh! Oh! Did you see that? No! Look at my feet! <laughs> I was filming! Oh! Was that. <laughs> oh! I am cold. That is so disgusting. <laughs> oh. Mmm! Tasty! <laughs> Alright, let's go home. So we've had a handful of really beautiful fish, but the highlight has got to, like, the best fish that I've caught from here ever has got to be a 30 pound linear. The thing just gave me a crazy run, sprinted back, picked up the rod. From the off, it was flying harder than anything I'd ever hooked from here. You can see all of the pads moving. Yeah. yeah. ripped me straight through the lily pads in and back out the other side i was wading out there pulling lily pads out trying to get to the fish then eventually i reached it felt my hand out. i was like oh my god i can feel the fish that's a big one as well and i felt that my hand rubbed along its scales along the middle and i knew there was a big linen here and i felt my i felt my hand along the flank and i felt the scales and i was like that's it, that's the big limb. Oh my God. So I was like ripping pads up, trying to get it in the net. The net, I'd taken the net apart for some reason. I think I was feeling how deep, deep, deep the lake was whilst I was wading. So I had to use my hand as a splitter, split the net in my hand, lifted the rod up and finally managed to get it in. To say it was chaotic is an understatement, but I landed it and my God, like I, it's one of the best fish I've caught this year. Beautiful fish, like, I don't, it's hard to describe really the feeling you get when a fish like that goes up, goes into the net, but boy was it worth the effort of doing those overnighters. Look at that. Oh, I just love this lake. I absolutely love this lake. I love the lake, I love the fish, the surroundings. We've gone and caught one of the best ones in here. I wonder how deep it is. I don't want to let it go. <laughs> so after that 30 pound linear, I thought things can't get much better than that. But after a chat with the owner, he actually showed us some photos of the other fish that are in here. A handful of epic commons in particular, like a couple of 30 pounders. Stunning fish. If we could catch one of those, it'd be a dream come true. But the important thing is that my rods are out on the spots and confident in the areas. Sun's just setting, it's super mild. I really hope we get one more tonight. So that's a bit of an unusual wake up call really. Left hand rod pulled up tight, went down, picked up the rod. This was the one that I cast over towards the reeds. And it had this cracking little common on the end. Nothing special, no monster, but it's a bite. And I'm happy to, happy to catch anything really at this time of year. But then I glanced around to my right hand rod, the one over towards the island. And I realized the bobbin was just twitching ever so slightly, just a tiny little bit, couple of beeps. 
pick that rod up <laughs> and it had this little creature on the end. Probably the smallest carp I've ever caught from this lake. But that's the thing with winter fishing. You've just got to take what you get given and appreciate everything that you catch because sometimes it can be tough, sometimes it can be uh, pretty slow, but when you catch something, it's all worthwhile, even when it is a proper little baby one like this. Well, as I've been saying all along through this session, you've got to take cold water carp fishing as it comes. Sometimes it goes good, sometimes it goes bad, and this session has been an example of when it really does come good. I've been very, very grateful to catch a few fish this session. It's been good fun. It's been quite mild, to be honest, for the time of year, so I've been quite lucky in that respect. Hopefully this video inspires you to keep fishing throughout the winter, no matter how cold it gets, there are fish that will be feeding, and it's definitely worth getting out to catch them. Because when you do get one, it's so, so much more rewarding.